Welcome to this video on diffusion, active transport and osmosis. So let's start with the definition, shall we? The definition for diffusion, the movement of a substance from a high concentration to a low concentration. And if you leave this alone, this will happen until the substance is evenly spread out throughout the area. Now obviously this can only happen in gases and liquids because in a solid the particles aren't free to move around. So before we go on, let's just make sure we know what we're talking about when we mean concentration. We've got here two solutions, A and B. A has only two solute particles in it, two sodium chloride particles and lots of water. Same amount of water here, but a lot more uh, solute particles. So we say in A, we have a low sodium chloride concentration. And if the sodium chloride concentration is low, then it's, it's more water, it's more dilute. So solute concentration and dilution are opposites. Over here, we've got high solute concentration, which means the dilution must be low. Um, the, the word uh, equilibrium here, reaching equilibrium point, just means that the, the solute particles are completely spread out. Um, so let's have a look at where this process takes place. We've got an alveolus here, single alveolus, an air sac, the plural is alveoli. Um, now, blood coming in from here is going to be, it's just been around the body, so it's dropped off all of its oxygen. It's going to be a very low oxygen concentration. What's the oxygen concentration like in here, in this air sac? Well, you've been breathing, you've been ventilating, you've been refreshing, constantly refreshing this air in here as you breathe in and out. So we've got a high concentration of oxygen in here, low oxygen concentration in here, so oxygen will move by diffusion into your blood. It's a passive process, it just happens, it doesn't take any energy. Uh, conversely, you've got CO2 concentration. Our blood's been around our body, producing, you know, every, all of our cells have been doing respiration, producing carbon dioxide. So there's high CO2 concentration here in this uh, arterial. Low CO2 concentration here. Any CO2 that goes in gets ventilated, it gets pushed out, and we, we refresh it with new, uh, new air. So we've got high CO2 concentration here low CO2 concentration here. So the natural movement, the natural diffusion through this thin membrane here, this thin wall, is into the alveolus. And, and that's what happens. Oxygen naturally diffuses into our blood and CO2 naturally diffuses out. Um, right, let's move on. Uh, diffusion can only take place over really, really small distances. Uh, this is a, a pulmonary capillary here, and you can see the distance that the gases have to travel. Here's a, here's a red blood cell, and this wall here is about two micrometers. That's two thousandths of a millimeter. So diffusion only happens over really small distances. If you're a very small single-celled organism, you can actually exist by diffusing gases in and out through your, uh, through your, your, your membrane, through your surface. We can't do that we're, because we're large multicellular creatures, so uh, that's not quite possible for us. Now, it's important you understand the idea of a diffusion gradient. Now, in diffusion, substances, as we said, move from a high concentration to a low concentration. So substances are moving down this concentration. And this concentration gradient has to exist for diffusion to take place. So we could have, high, we've got high CO2 concentration here. This is the blood that's just been around our body. Low CO2 concentration here. This is the inside of an alveolus. And, and carbon dioxide will move down this diffusion gradient. And the bigger the difference, the bigger the difference between here and here, the higher the diffusion gradient, the faster diffusion will take place. Okay, this is an example of um, active transport. Now active transport is when you move against a diffusion gradient. This is the other way. This is moving from a low concentration to a high concentration. Um, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. This is not a passive process. This is an active tr process. So in root hair cells, for example, in root hair cells, the plant actively has to pump uh, mineral ions from the dilute low concentration water into the plant itself. So active transport is going against a concentration gradient and it takes a lot of energy. Let's finish up by talking about osmosis. Now, osmosis is the net movement of water from a dilute to a less dilute solution. It's kind of like the diffusion of water. Um, so let's have a look. Okay, so here we've got a beaker and we've got a selectively permeable membrane or a semi-permeable membrane. Now, permeable means it'll let things go through it. Um, semi-permeable or selectively permeable means it'll only let certain things go through it. Big things like starches and proteins won't go through this. Little things like water and maybe glucose will go through it. 
Um, so we've got this semi-permeable membrane and we've got pure water. Now that is as dilute as you can get. That is our mind more dilute. And then we've got a, di a fairly dilute solution. There's some solutes in here. More dilute, less dilute. And osmosis is the movement of water from a more dilute to a less dilute. It's the net movement of water. So by net, I mean water is going in both directions, but it depends which arrow is bigger, kind of like your bank account. If you've got more money coming in than you've got going out, then overall you've got a net movement in. If you're spending more than you're earning, then overall you've got a net movement out. Same, same thing. So water goes both ways. Um, so we can guess, we can predict what's going to happen here. Our water is going to, going to have a net movement from dilute to less dilute. And off it goes. And we reach an equilibrium point. And the equilibrium point is really reached when there is no net movement of water. The arrows are the same. Water is moving as quickly this way as it is this way. So it's still going. It looks. It might look to us that it's stopped, but it hasn't. It's still moving. It's just moving in the, at the same rate, and there is no net movement of water. So that's osmosis. Now, hypertonic here, hyper means greater, and tonic refers to concentration, refers to the outside solution. Hypertonic, more concentrated. So basically, in our, in our red blood cell here, we've popped our red blood cell into a really concentrated solution, really sugary, really salty, whatever. And what's happened is, by osmosis, the water has left through a semi-permeable membrane, left the red blood cell, and it's become what we call crenated. It's all crinkled up and shrunk. If you put a red blood cell into an isotonic, iso means the same. So here, the outside and the inside concentrations are the same. That means equal net movement of water in and out, so no net movement at all, and the red blood cell functions quite happily doing its job carrying oxygen and carbon dioxide around the body. Um, what if we place it into a hypotonic? Hypo, so this time the outside is more watery. Well, diffusion is the more move, movement of water from more watery to less watery, so water moves into the red blood cell. The red blood cell swells up and it bursts. Um, and this is called hemolysis, hemolysis. Lysis means to split and heme refers to blood, hemolysis. Uh, what about plants? If you put a plant cell into a hypertonic solution, it's more concentrated and water will leak out. Water leaks out into the more concentrated, less dilute water. And what happens is the membrane rips off of the cell wall because the cytoplasm is shrinking. Cytoplasm is mostly water. And when you drag all the water out of it, the cytoplasm shrinks and it tears it off of the cell membrane. These gaps here will be the solution on the outside. And you can see that under a microscope. Um, that's called plasmolysis. The cell has been plasmalized. Uh, isotonic, it's quite happy there doing its thing. Uh, what about hypotonic? Hypotonic, it's more watery on the outside, so water moves into the cell, the vacuole fills up and it swells, but unlike the red blood cell, we have a strong cellulose cell wall, and that stops the thing from bursting. So here, all of the cells will push on all of the other cells. So there's an example of what happens in red blood cells and plant cells if you put them into those three situations. Finally, one, one use, one plant use of um, osmosis is in guard cells. We've got our two guard cells here and they make up a stoma. One is called a stoma lot stomata and these are the pores spread all over the bottom of a lot of leaves. You get these stomata. Just like you need a mouth and a nose to breathe to, for gas exchange to take place, a plant needs holes as well and it's got its holes are called stomata and they're microscopic and they're all along the bottom. For the stomata to open, the guard cells have to fill with water by osmosis. Now the inside part of the guard cell is less elastic than the outside and that means when it fills with water it bends around like this. And if you put two opposite each other you get this pore opening up through which gas exchange can take place. And there's an actual real photograph here of two guard cells. Uh, it's looking pretty shut at the moment. So there we are, active transport, uh, diffusion and osmosis uh, very very quickly. Uh, thank you very much for watching.